Hey everybody, we are live streaming direct from our new dojo. Just got the brand new mats in from Zebra Mats. Shout out to Zebra Mats. These are the two inch uh, mats and they're so comfortable. They're really slippery. Woo, woo, bam! <laughs> you can spit on them like crazy. So it's gonna be interesting to do some moves on these. Um, thank you all for hopping on with us. What I wanna do today is um, talk about and do martial arts. One of the biggest things for me in martial arts of all the people that have ever bought gear from us, we do surveys and we send them out things and I ask them, hey, what is it that you guys really appreciate about martial arts? And one of the things is putting on the gi in a daily practice and then stretching routines. It's so important to keep your flexibility and be able to move, to be able to um, just have your body be supple. So we're going to start with a stretching routine today. I encourage you guys not to just watch this, get up and actually move. If something's challenging you a little bit too much, modify it for yourself. You don't have to do exactly everything that we're gonna be doing, but if it doesn't, push yourself a little bit. Try, challenge yourself, that's what martial arts does too, in a safe environment. So welcome and let's get started. So find yourself in a little space that you have enough room to move around in a little bit because we move with our uh, stretching routine as well. So deep breath, looking up and down, looking up and down. Nice deep breath, looking left and right now, left and right and left and right and around in a big circle all the way around if it feels good for your neck sometimes you have to start a little bit slow at first and then you can kind of go with it switching directions all the way around nice deep breaths and i have a top down philosophy with stretching so left arm up right arm going around now nice big circles I like to stretch from the top of my body and rotate all the way through. Rotate the joints, get blood moving. Like in, for instance, this one, go ahead and swing backwards now. I'm rocking with my legs at the same time. I'm working on my shoulder and my hands and my arms. My, my spine is twisting. All sorts of good stuff are happening here. Switch sides, other foot forward. And we're practicing martial arts already. I'm calling this my active hand. I keep it up. A lot of times people will do martial arts, they'll throw a technique out and their other hand will be down and it's not ready to block. Going backwards. Oh, and by the way, I'm joined today by the famous Victor. <laughs> He's one of my black belts, that's amazing. Super cool attitude. And he said, I'll come on and help you out today. So after we're done with our stretching routine, we'll show some ninja stuff. <laughs> you. Okay, going side to side now. So taking big twists, nice breathing. Still sink down into your knees with this. Feels good to ground in. Feel where you're at. Hips moving, spines moving, breath works moving. I can already feel I'm warming up, getting the juices going. All right. Putting your hands on your hips, going around in a big circle, all the way around. Explore those hips. There's lots of nice juicy things inside that show up sometimes when we begin our stretching routine. Awesome, other way. I try to keep my left and right sides balanced pretty good while I'm going. And so we'll try to do like six, seven, or eight rotations each. All right, let's drop down into the knees. Knees are about shoulder width apart. Nice deep knee bends. One of the things when you're training um, at a home dojo, like for ours here in Santa Cruz, is we like to start every class with a stretching routine. When you go to Japan or a lot of some other schools that are out there, they expect you to already be warmed up when you come to your class because they want to just teach technique. They want everybody to get the most out of their training. So it's like up to you to do your Jun and Taiso, your stretching routines and your muscles. Put your legs together. Let's rotate both knees now. Coming down and in. Nice 
circles, feeling them out, other direction, deep breaths while you're doing this. So yeah, part of our routine in our school, every day, every, every class, we do our stretching routine. Okay, let's drop into one ankle. So just put your weight on the other leg, rotate that ankle around, feel what that's like. And the other direction. Nice. All right, switching sides. Put your weight over on this side. There's a lot of moves that we do with stances and work where we're balancing on one leg. This is a good way to start to go into this. Switch directions. Awesome, here's a little bonus one for this one. Take your toes and curl them over and push them to the ground come back do it again go back and forth and smush the top of your toes down on the ground switch sides smush those toes down come back smush them again come back smush them again awesome okay let's put our left foot forward we're gonna have our hand come up we're gonna turn our pinky towards us grab around the thumb and put yourself in what we call multi-yaku, outside wrist turn. I'm pushing my hand in so that it bends at the same time as I'm coming down I push. When I come up, I relieve the pressure. So I can really work if my forearms are tight and I could put this gyaku on and see what it feels like to have this come. Now I go thumbs down, come on the back of the hand and I row towards me. So I'm also working my legs again, pumping blood, getting warmed up all together, not just using my arms, but I'm stretching that wrist. We call this one takiori, breaking bamboo. And then pulling down, and not only just here, but go ahead and rock side to side. I like to use a lot of movement in my stretching and not just stay static. It just seems like I've got a wiggle, could be me. I just always am moving <laughs> every day in my whole life. Everything I do, I like movement. Switching, pulling your fingers, come right over and then rotate again. A little bit of a wiggle. Awesome, stretching that forearm out. That feels so good. Shake that out, switch sides. Your other hand's up now, rotating again. Pinky was towards you. Twist and push in with that wrist and let it rip. <laughs> this is a good one. So I have a really fun skateboarding old injury in this wrist from years ago. And it helps so much to do this. I can feel it just loosen up and it gets happy. It's, it's very happy that I'm doing this. Thumbs down, pushing in. Yeah, when the first electric skateboard came out, oh yeah, 25, 30 miles an hour, had to show off in front of a police officer <laughs> going down a pavement road, and I fell off, caught myself, and broke my wrist, but I was young and didn't know, and so I just shook it off and kept going, went to work. That'll ah, fix itself, but the ligaments didn't attach quite the same, so... The doctor said, if you would have came to see us, we could have helped you. <laughs> now you're bone on bone in some of the areas. And I said, well, there you go. That's life. That's why we stretch so that we can feel good again and move. All right, shaking that out. Nice. Okay, so now we're going to go down to the ground for a couple of different stretches. How we start to work our way down there is we're gonna spread our legs Shoulder width apart. We're gonna go down to the center first and drop your head straight down. Take a few deep breaths. Now go over to the right side. Pull yourself in. A couple more deep breaths. Go into the left side. A couple deep breaths. And one more time, back to center. Try to straighten your knees out and try to put your head down to the ground. Very good. 
Now we're gonna rock over to the right side. It's okay to use your hands here. And you're gonna try to get a low stretch with your foot on the ground. And then go ahead and go over to the other side. Nice. Oh, I'm feeling it. It's good. Back over one more time to this side. Nice and low into that hip joint. If you can um, stay with us and go in low, that's great. If you have to be up higher, that's fine too. Whatever works for you, it's not a competition. Okay, now we're gonna go back one more time. This time, turn your outside foot so toes are facing up. This will allow you get into your hip or your glutes a bit more and you'll feel your hamstring a bit. Switch sides, other toes up. Oh yeah, awesome. And now the fun one that everybody loves, going down to the center for splits. Woo! Okay, very good. And take a seat. So we're gonna have our splits stay open and we're gonna go to the right and the left again. So we're gonna go to the right. When we're in our school, I count out in Japanese so people get to kind of practice. So ichi, ni, san, shi, go. Other side. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. And to the middle. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. One more time, going to the right. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. To the left. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. And to the middle. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. All right, bringing those legs together. Now we're going to pick our leg up. We're gonna go ahead and go over some rotations here with the ankle. I like to rotate nine times and it helps me out. Remember that there's nine schools of ninjutsu, so we'll give them nine rotations. Going the other way nine times awesome i can start to see a lot of people here on the comments thank you guys uh later on when we're showing techniques go ahead and put in what you guys would wish that we would show because this live version we're doing now uh foot on the ground look behind you is only the first one we're going to start doing these a lot more and i want to start to put out um, some content that people really want to see we uh, have some people that want to see specific schools. I could see up there Tagagi Yoshinru. I could see some other things. That's cool. And switch feet. We're going to do the rotations on the other side of our ankle. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, shichi, hachi, ku. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, chichi, hachi, ku. And put the foot on the ground, looking behind you. Push up with the backhand, try to extend your spine. Deep breath in and out. Twist a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now we're going to do a little bit of rolling. This rolling, if you're in a small space and you're training solo, this is the best way to do it. So if we turn sideways here, I'm going to hold on to my knees. I'm just going to roll one side of my spine, then the other. And the way I do is put one foot in front of the other. So that time I went left side, this time I'm right side. So we'll count out 10 of these. Ichi, knee, son. She go Roku Shichi Hachi Ku Ju. Okay, now we're gonna put our feet up into the air. So we come up a little bit onto our upper back. So we go Ichi Ni. Son, she, go, roku, shichi, hachi, ku.
Cuckoo. Jute. All right, now we're gonna go all the way back and hold if you can. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. And forward into a small ball. Take some breath. And all the way back and hold. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. Back forward. Couple more deep breaths, let it out. See if you can crunch down in there a little bit more. Last time. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. And coming forward. Awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and switch now. We're gonna have our hands up and knees up, crawl position. And we're going to drop our stomach and look up towards the ceiling. And then we're gonna curl our back like a hissing cat. Drop towards the ceiling. Hissing cat. One more time, looking up. And up. Okay, I'll turn towards you guys so you can see this one now. You're in that same position. Your right hand is gonna go through. Shoulder on the ground and reach and point towards the sky with your other hand. And switch sides. Left hand goes through, right hand goes up. And it's okay if you wiggle in here a little bit. You can play with that upper back and spine. Feels really good. Coming back up one more time. We'll do the other side, stretching through, pointing up. Victor, point up with your left hand if you can. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Respecting his shoulder. Other side, coming through, pointing up. Awesome. Okay. So now we're gonna take our knees out and go really far out, spread into our legs. And we're gonna come down on our forearms and I'm gonna rock forward, relieve the pressure, and then push back into my knees and see if I can get that nice and sank in there and deep into the hip crease. Coming forward, one more time, going back in. Okay, now spreading your feet out to the sides like a frog. You're gonna do the same thing. Go forward, relieve the pressure, and go back in. Oh, that one's juicy. <laughs> Coming forward, relieve the pressure, and go back in. All right, awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll do a little bit more hip stuff today. So, I'm going to do a shout out to Kelly Starrett up in San Francisco. He's an amazing guy. He wrote a book called The Supple Leopard, and he has helped us so much. So go ahead and put your left foot up. Your left hands are down, and you're going to try to sink here into your hip joint. And it's okay to wiggle around a little bit. All right, and then we're going to come down to our forearms. And we're really deep in that hip socket. Oh yeah. Now bring yourself out to your right forearm and push on your left knee, but push back in and give yourself resistance. Give yourself resistance. Oh, that feels good. All right, climb up over that knee now and go to the other side and see if you can touch the floor. <sighs> Breathing, nice deep breaths. Awesome, okay, foot is out back and it's hanging out there. Right on top, a few breaths. Should really feel that in the outside of your glutes and your hamstring and your quads. Coming back up onto that left foot, shoot your right foot through and go ahead and push up through your right hand and pull that knee in. And just pull those toes back and your right foot towards you and feel that stretch. Awesome. Okay, swinging this forward. 
We're going to have our one leg on top. We reach through, grab underneath our knee, and we're going to do three rock backs on our back here. So one, two, and three. All right. Switch sides time. So right foot goes up. Start with your hands and drop down into your hip joint, wiggling around. Feel that coming down on the forearms. Oh yeah, a little bit deeper. This side's nice, it's already feeling good. Push out to your left a little and push on your right leg this time. Nice. Give yourself resistance back. And go ahead and flip to the other side. I'll fix my microphone that popped off because of my awesome stretching. <laughs> I remember Hatsumi Sensei would be putting on Tai Kais and Daikomi Osais, and he'd be doing moves with people, and the microphone would just pew. <laughs> it was like all the time they were picking it back up and putting it back on him. But that's the fun of martial arts. Okay, coming back to center. Take your right foot, find right in between on your center, and then start to lower into that hip without putting your knee on the ground yet. Rock around and find that nice deep hip joint. Oh yeah, this is the good stuff. This is what makes you kick better, become way more flexible, you can move faster. Just amazing stuff. Okay, drop down onto that outside leg now and go ahead and come down on top of that leg. Oh yeah. Couple deep breaths, breathe right into that. Anywhere where you find that pain or that tightness, see if you can breathe right into it and let it go. It's like a more metaphor for life. When you come across hard stuff in life, just let it go. Don't forget about it so you don't make the same mistake twice, but let it go. Okay, coming back up, shoot your foot out to the side here. Grab onto your leg, pull back those toes. Breathing, nice deep breaths. Get into that hip. Oh, that outside just coming right up. Feels so good. I love stretching. <laughs> awesome, swinging forward. We've got our foot over the top. Reach through, grab your leg. We're going back three times. Make sure you're not gonna run into the wall behind you. Here we go. Ichi. Knee. Song. Awesome. Okay, let's stand up. All right, so we have a lot more things uh, that we cover each day. We do kind of a new stretching routine, but that's a kind of a nice longer stretching routine that we end up liking to do. Then one of the things we love to get into at this point is we go to the basics. So we do the Kihon Hapo a lot. We do the Sanchin no Kata, Gokui no Kata, and we'll start with that. Hatsumi Sensei, a long time ago, uh, said in some of the beginning classes I went to in 1991 that a lot of times they would just start with Sanshin or Gokui no Kata, and sometimes they'd do it on ice. Sometimes they'd uh, be doing it in a circle and facing each other. A lot of times we like to do that as well. Uh, just make a big circle and everybody does it. Now you're watching somebody else do it and you're doing it yourself. So let's do it together. First one is Chino Kata, the earth feeling form. We come back on the right side and our hand comes up. We strike forward with a three finger strike. Then we alternate sides. There are many uh, technical things that you can learn about this form. Um, one of the ways for warm ups, uh, I was at a Daikomi Osai in Japan and Hatsumi Sensei was up in the second room um, upstairs and he had the door cracked open. And when he was doing this as a warm up, it was cool. He was letting his arms go really big and using huge footwork to do a different type of a warm up. When we do it, we just come back on one side, get off line and come forward with our hand. Um, we're not doing it the exact technical way that a lot of people will practice the traditional way, 
but it's okay. You're doing movement, you're getting warmed up and you're flowing and you're getting to practice and learn and move your body and learn angling, distancing and timing. Okay, earth feeling form, chi no kata. Next one, sui no kata. We come back, do a block and come through with a mote shuto. When I'm training with my students, when I have my other teachers like Victor, they're teaching their classes. We like to say the names a lot of Jodan Uke, Mote Shuto, so that the students start to dial in what those are, what they mean. And it helps everybody hear, see, and feel the technique. So it goes in through your sight, through your sound, and through tactile touch. And it's just a really quick and effective way to start to learn movement and then precision of techniques. Because when you go to Japan and you're watching some of the top grandmasters now move, you can break their technique down and go, oh, he came back with a Jodan Uke to the right side, came in with a slide technique, did a Gunsei Kinage and followed up with, you know, an Ogiaku pin or whatever. And it's, uh, it's very cool to put language to the Bujinkan, to any martial art for that matter. And uh, same thing with uh, shooting classes. You, they, have, they have just nomenclature of names that help people learn. Okay, so that was Sui no Kata. Now we go to Ka no Kata, fire feeling form. Same thing, Jodan Uke, Urashuto. We're practicing, we drop into our knees, we stay down, we stay present. We're not rising up out of this. We're in it to win it. I like one of the things that I heard was, okay, if a person gets stuck in their car and you're gonna push their car out of the snow, do you go like this to push it out or do you get down to get ready, right? So it's the same thing with martial arts. If I'm down in my movement and I'm sank into my center, you can do a lot more, you can move faster, you're more solid, you're grounded, but not grounded like meditation grounded, but grounded like solid. Kano kata. Okay, then we go into the wind feeling form. Fu, low block, boshiken, simulating a stab, or what we call it in the Bujinkan, a ski. A lot of people look at how the Bujinkan punches, or holds their punch out, as they say. And it's really a stab. Ski means to stab. It's an armor-based uh, weapons art. So a lot of things that we're simulating are stabs from weapons, not a punch. Punching is, right, regular punching. Stabs are different. You're holding it out and simulating a different movement. So it's interesting to educate people on what we're doing. It's good. It's also good to cross train. I love cross training. I highly recommend it. There's a lot of people who could use some good cross training, doing some really good sparring sessions. You'll learn a lot. Okay, next one. Chi sui kafu ku no kata. Woo! Low block, mitsubishi, and a kick. One of the things that I love with this one is this Mitsubishi coming up, already moves your body dynamics so that you're doing footwork, spine work, hand work, and then coming through. It's just flows so natural. One of my favorite forms of this one. Now I'm feeling really warmed up. My body feels good. We also have stage lighting in here so we can light up good for you guys in front of the camera. And it's warm. <laughs> Victor's, Victor's dripping over here. I like it. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so that's the Sanchin or Gokui no Kata. And um, then we probably will go into some other basics today because it's fun to practice basics. Uh, we had some of the top people come out from Japan and got to train with us here in California. Um, they'll stay unmentioned at this po point, but they were here for two years. And a lot of what we got to do were work on basics. And then they broke out the Waza and we went deep dive into those. Every Sunday we had lessons for like four or five hours. It was so good. Okay, so one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna work on 
Jodan Uke, but we're going to use Tai Sabaki with it. So Tai Sabaki, when we teach it for basics, is just moving offline, and the most basic Tai Sabaki we teach is 45. 45 degree angle gives you what? Ability to check something out, you're off line of an attack. Most attacks are gonna come down the line straight or a stab or a swing of a club or whatever. Some of them will come to the side, but even if you're moving back, that gives you room to assess and then take action after that. So with students, basics, we 45 out. We come back with Tai Sabaki. Since we want people to be able to punch and kick, then we make it a drill. So Victor's over here. He's in Ichimanji facing me, he throws the punch, and I just work inside. And then we go down the room with this. And not only do I do that, but then I can practice hitting different Kyusha points later on so that even if you're an advanced person, you're not getting bored. You're like, okay, this time I'm gonna hit the Hoshi. Now I'm gonna hit the Jokin. Now I'm gonna hit, you know, you just go through all the different pressure points. So it's up to you to keep your training relevant and not boring. It's in you, you can do it. So if you're working with beginners a lot, you can make it advanced in your own mind. Okay, so that's Jodan Uke with a ski punch. He throws it. The Jokin is inside the bicep tricep. Second time, maybe I'll hit the Hoshi, which is at the elbow. Maybe I'll come and hit the back of his hand and I'll go to the outside. So now Victor's gonna float and do outside Jodan Uke's. There's an inside, there's an outside, there's an inside, there's an outside. Now we'll go into Gaidon Uke. He's gonna punch at my stomach. My hands are in a ready position and I block. I'm gonna give it here all the way out. Then I go to the same thing for him. We come in, he moves his footwork. He's using Tai Sabaki and we're getting to slip on these mats. These are so fun because it's like training on the ice. Like Hatsumi used to got, get to do with his guys in the old days. I love it. It's fun to train. Okay. So that was Jodan Uke, upper level block and Gaidon Uke, lower level block, right? Basics, basics. Now we get into the good ones because these are the ones like I took boxing from some professional boxers before and they do these quick knockdown passes and they keep their hands loose. Bujin Khan has it too. It's called Jodan Nagash, upper level pass. So now when he throws the punch, I just bat this away. I keep my center, I move my footwork and I go ahead and do that. Then he does it to me, upper level pass. Awesome, and did you see he took a different uh, route than me? So let's uh, have you do your block one more time. We'll go slow. He had his hand just come up and he used the back side of his hand. When I was doing it, I pushed with my hand on the inside. Then we have all this stuff that we can do in between. So it's unlimited what you can do. Let's do another round and we'll do Jodan Nagash again. So I can go upper level pass, you throw the punch. I'm here, I might use the same hand and leave this one out and I'm already here. I could use my elbows. I could use my forearms. It's unlimited in what you can do with Jodan Nagash, upper level flow. Now we get into lower level throw, the flow. So he throws a kick at my stomach, boom, and he wants to hit me. I do that all the time. I test my students to see if they're gonna be true with their punches and kicks, because if they're holding back and not hitting, he really hit me right there. That was perfect, thank you. That's good training. When you're just missing or hitting really lightly or helping your partner by not hitting, you're not training good. Don't do that. If you're gonna train, train for real. Like you don't have to go hyper and fast all the time, but you have to train effectively. So if I'm gonna kick Victor, I'm gonna kick Victor, right? I, I'm good enough to control that kick and not break him. Unless we agree we're gonna really amp it up. So when he comes in to kick me, that's what I expect. I expect a good kick. And now my uh, technique works. And later on, when we get into Waza, of all the schools, it's dependent upon whether the person is attacking the right way. So do a fake kick and just barely make it to me. Did that look the same? Is his balance Kamai broken? No, then you can't practice the real Waza later. So. For everybody out there when you're training, teach your students how to do really good attacks so that later on the wazas will actually fall into place of what they're supposed to be like. So he does a good kick. 
I block it off here. Now look at what I have. I have all these opportunities for all these different moves because he's in the right range because he kicked right. So back to gate on the gosh, we're flowing. I like this forearm hit one, it's amazing. I could also come in from the side and pass. I can also push this kick with my palm. I could go like this. I could use my leg to do gate on the gosh. I'll come at you. Same thing, he's just gonna pass it. I'm gonna give him good kicks and we're gonna be able to train effectively then. So I hope you guys are liking this. It's so much fun to teach people. And the way that I teach, um, a lot of times on Bujikan is uh, I've heard very good comments. It compliments me so much. They say, you teach like a blue collar person. And I'm like, thank you for that compliment. Cause I just get it, see if it works. We get down and dirty and try it out. A lot of people, they talk so much. I can't understand. They're doing all this high level stuff. And I'm like, let's just grind, see what works here. Let's get it going. So awesome. Okay, let's get into a couple other basics. Let's get into Ichimanji no Kata. So this one, we do a lot at the school because uh, the person who came to the United States that trained with us a lot, looked at a bunch of the schools around here and said, oh, you guys do a lot of rolling, falling, and the basics, you do a kihon all the time. He goes, that's really good. That's where a lot of the art comes from. So let's do Ichimanji no Kata. This is a basic version. Both people start with right foot back, left hands up. I'm gonna punch at Victor, he goes out, hits with Jodan Uke, comes in and gives me a shuto. That shuto can go to the neck, the collarbone, the temple. Then we do the other side. I throw the left punch, he goes out and he comes in and gives me a hit. Notice, he actually hit me, he pushed me. That's perfect, that's what we want. We don't want people to go out on the street and get hit for the first time and freak out because they've never been hit hard and they don't know what that's like, right? Okay, now we're gonna do it again. So maybe this time he'll punch at me and I'm gonna go ahead and take a different angle of this and I'll hit in a different way. So I'm gonna step out at a 90 instead of straight back at a 45 and then I'm gonna give it a different hit. Now he's gonna change it again so he could do a different one. Nice, he came through with the spiral hit. Took my head off, that was awesome. Okay, one more. Maybe I'll do an upper hit and then we'll change it into that. <laughs> it's so much fun, right? There's so many ways you can move with this. Okay, so we keep it basic. Ichimanji no kata, we will both want to roll and do other things. Now that's the basics. So now we do the ura side of that. What is that? Ura side of Ichimanji? Outside. So I punch at him, he goes to the outside for his block. Now he's got to change his strike. Sometimes my shoulder might be in the way for him to do the shuto, so maybe he does a punch to my gut. There's a bunch of ways he can do it, but we give him the liberty to try it out. He throws a punch at me, I block. Oh, I love this one. It just lines the ribs up so good. And I'm out, maybe I'll pull down and hit to the top of the head there. So it's perfect. Let's do it one more time. Boom, pop, boom, pop, nice. Boom, pa, boom, pa. <laughs> okay, you can add kicks in too, it's unlimited. It's the hanka, right? Very good. Okay, let's get into Jumanji no Kata. Starting in Jumanji. We like to teach it where it's a three count. So, as I come at Victor, we'll just roll through it. One, multi. Mitsubishi, two, Mitsubishi, and three, Mitsubishi. Perfect. I'll get into the deeper explanation for you guys on my take on this one. I love it. So I'm in Jumanji. My knees are bent. My knees are bent because then I can move quickly from here and go in other directions. So if I'm on a battlefield and I go like this and I am like this, I've kind of given myself away. So I might take a different tactic, but for practicing purposes, we could be on the street and be like, hey, how's it going? My hands might just be up talking like this because now I'm already at an advantage to block. But for Jumanji, as it comes in, I want to step right at the right angle so this misses, right? By the second time we would come, he would be on me and make it. But since I zigzagged at a 45, I now am coiled up and I can come in with this hit and then hit him off balance and then take his 
uh, mine with Mitsubishi. If he doesn't move back with my hands, I poke people in the head so that they realize I'm going for your eyes. If you don't move, I'm gonna give you a third eye enlightenment. Boink, right? <laughs> hey, Mo. Okay, then I pull my foot back and come back in. Now I'm on the other side. Look at this, right out of the angle again. And then I hit in and I'm ready. And then the third one, I'm back in and I'm just out of the way again. So this is the magic of Jumanji. We're teaching people angling, distancing, and timing. It's very critical where you step. Um, Hatsumi and a lot of the new grandmasters out there are masters at this. They will have a person throw a punch and they'll already just be offline with their steps, just little tiny steps, and they'll control it right from the first situation. So it's amazing. That's why we do this, because then you get to see the higher levels and it just keeps unfolding. So that's why I'm not going to quit. I love it. Yeah. All right. So that's Jumanji. Let's go one more round. We won't talk about it. One, two, three. Two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> He's slipping on the mats. It's great. It. One, two, three. It's real life. One, two, three. Yeah, it is real life. The situation changes. Awesome. Okay, we'll do the last one then for today. We're going to get into Hicho. Now, most people know the stance Hicho no Kamai. You, you get on one foot. When we teach beginners this one, I say, turn your foot out of 45, sink into your stance, perch your other leg up on top, whatever knee is forward, that hand comes up. And then you can put this hand in the crux of the elbow or on top. You could hide a knife in it, a lot of different things. But if we were in a real fight, we're on a battlefield or something like that, you're not going to stand like this and wait for somebody. It's putting you at a disadvantage. But let's say for instance, um, I swung at Victor's leg and he pulls it up out of the way, that changes things. All of a sudden you saw Hicho for a moment. That's why uh, postures are transitory. We practice them at first just statically, meaning we don't move. We just show you what the posture is and we go through them and we sink into them and embody them. But really they're meant for if something happens, you're going to move out of the way and you might pull your foot out of the way. So when we learned Hicho no Kata, I was first taught to do this and come in and go, right? Then we got to learn a few other versions of it and this is the one that I love the most. I cover my face so my face isn't much of a target, but my uh, midsection is open. So this is the opening of Hicho no Kata. So if Victor has his hands up, I go, okay, his face, I'm gonna have to get through his hands to get a target in there to hit with something. I, you know, it's gonna be hard. But I can see that stomach boom and I wanna take a shot at that because I can, I can probably hit that one really good. He's gonna use Tai Sabaki again, basics. Always oh, getting off line in some way. Blocks, he kicks with his front foot, boom, and comes through with a shuto. Nice, thank you for hitting me. You're welcome, thank you. All right, other side. Hoko. Boom, he's in, bam, and opens it up. Now, what was cool about that? He did his kick, which affected my balance point. That changes where he puts his foot down. Okay, so if I'm doing it here, he, he punches my stomach, I block. I could kick the face and come through and hit. I didn't hit him. I didn't kick him. I could have. But now, if I do this other side, I come here and I push his body back, I can step down right away and then use my distancing of that step. So my point in this is, if the person comes in and punches, and I'm here and I kick them back, it'll change where I put this foot down on the second part of that technique. If I just kick to break, then I just put my foot down where the other one was. If I push him and go for distance, now I have to chase and go after him for a bigger chase with that one. So this is where angling, distancing, and timing through practice comes in. And that's why we're here, practice. This is the best stuff. You always feel better when you put on a gi, when you get on the mat, when you show respect, when you do your bow in, it's like you're hooking up, you're hooking into that higher channel. In my opinion, when we say what we do for our bowen, Shikin Haramitsu Daikomyo, we're, we're invoking our higher uh, power. We're saying, I wanna work on myself. I wanna polish that inner mirror. I wanna become a better person. And I'm gonna do it through my practice, through my discipline, through
through stretching, through doing a, a, a really cool martial art, and then you're gonna be, go out to the world and you're gonna make better people. If you're a teacher, you're gonna make better human beings. It's like, it's amazing what it does for people's lives. I've just seen so many people change over the years that I've been teaching, and I'm gonna keep doing it because I love it, and um, I love the art. And what it's done for me, I wanna give back. So, I hope you guys really enjoyed today's session. We're just jamming right now and having a good time. Um, thank you so much for coming today, Victor. For Appreciate you being here. Thank you for Merlin, Merlin setting up all of our cameras, thank all of our sound equipment. We've been working behind the scenes to get our new gear up and running. And this is amazing. I'm gonna look through a lot of the comments here. We've got people joining us from Japan, from Argentina, all over the place. This is awesome, yeah. perfect. So um, we're gonna keep doing these. We're gonna put them out. I'll let you guys know ahead of time again. I'll try to get it out a week ahead so that you know when we're gonna do one. Uh, if you wanna write in some of the comments, what time works best for you and your time zone, we'll try to find a time that works for everybody. You can always go back through and you can always look at um, different time zones. Oh, and I have a special announcement, one second. <laughs> This is the drum roll please part. <laughs> we have the first ever new uh, Ninja Training TV swag. So we're gonna have Ninja Training TV out on the bottom and in Japanese on the top and kanji. And then the front is going to have the nine schools. So this nine school shirt is really cool. Um, it has all of the different nine schools that we study. This will be on the back of the shirt and the front of the shirt will have a little Ninja Training TV logo guy that we have on our pages uh, with the samurai with the two swords going up. And uh, these shirts will be coming out. So if you want to order these shirts, I think they're going for 25 block bucks plus shipping. You could go to info at Ninja Training TV and email us your size. And then we will go ahead and uh, take a look at that. Um, so thank you guys so much for showing up. It was really fun. Um, the last uh, Taikai we went to was Noguchi Sensei, and it was so fun to meet everybody there and just be going through all of the beautiful techniques that he uh, showed and uh, train with all of the top level people from all over the world and meet all sorts of really cool new pe people as well. So thank you guys so much for coming. And as always, keep training. Have a good one.